Hey guys, welcome back to Edimon Tutorials on Database Management Systems. In today's lecture, we are going to start a fourth chapter. And the first topic that we are going to discuss is Introduction to Schema Refinement. So, throughout this video, we are going to see what Schema Refinement is. We are going to recall what Schema Refinement is, which we have studied in our second chapter. And then we will see what are the problems uh, that are occurred uh, and what are the problems that we should identify as a part of schema refinement and we'll see some solutions to rectify or refine these problems. So let's start this video by recalling uh, what schema refinement is. So I hope you guys uh, remember the schema refinement term from the second lesson where we discuss a database design. So schema refinement is a fourth step in the database design where we analyze the collection of tables that are formed from the relational schema and we try to find out the potential problems in that particular schema and we also try to re um, refine the schema so as to address the problems right so uh, the main intent of schema refinement is to address and refinement approach based on decomposition so um, decomposition is a new term that uh, we have just heard so it is a process of define uh, you know dividing a single large table into smaller set of tables so as to reduce the redundancy. I hope uh, you know what data redundancy is. We have discussed about data redundancy many times. Right. So a redundant data storage of uh, info is the root cause of problems. See sometimes. So uh, let us look at the problems caused by redundancy. Uh, redundant data storage can lead to many problems and we have four uh, important problems. Uh, that are caused by redundancy they are redundant storage of course repetition of data then uh, three types of anomalies that is insertion anomaly updation anomaly and deletion anomaly anomaly refers to an uh, ambiguity or confusion in the problems or it can also be thought of as a problems insertion problems deletion problems and uh, updation problems so let us look at each of them first one is that uh, updation anomaly we say updation anomalies occurred for example i am storing a copy of data at different places so and then i am updating the data in only one copy and i am not reflecting those changes to all the other copies which says here the data is inconsistent because the data is same it is present it should be present same in all the different places but i am updating to only one copy and i am leaving all the other copies untouched which is causing data inconsistency which is which we should avoid in a database design so this is a problem that is occurred due to the redundant data the second problem is that insertion this is also similar to the updation for example when i have same copy of data at different places and i try to in, uh, insert some information into um, the data when the data is redundant Sometimes the insertion may fail at some places and it might reflect in some other places which again causes inconsistency problems. So third one is also the same, deletion anomalies. I am I'm performing deletion of some records at particular uh, instance and it is not reflected to all the other instances, then that would cause a deletion anomaly also. Right, so uh, let's take an example to understand this better. Here we have a table. Here yeah, this particular table is a, sorry, this is a hourly wages table, right. So in this table, we have columns like SSN name, a lot, rating, hourly wages and hours worked. So guys, uh, just observe one thing. Here the rating value is repeated like 8, 8, 8. It is repeated three times and the hourly wages are repeated uh, in the same way, see. Here, the wages are calculated depending upon the rating value. For the rating value 8, we are taking wages to be 10. For 5, we are taking 7. So, of course, this is causing some redundancy. If at all, I change uh, uh, Vihan's data to be 7. I am not uh, reflecting the changes to the hourly wages. This is an updation anomaly. First one is I am talking about the updation anomaly. So I have updated the rating value to be 7 and I have not changed this value. Of course this is affecting my condition because from this first instance we have uh, observed that the person with 8 rating will be getting uh, this much wages, 10 wages. The person with 5 will be getting 7. 
but when i updated uh, this to be 7 now this 7 person is also getting 10 which is against my rule so this is causing the updation anomaly the problems that we can have in a table so let's get back to that okay so these are the different types of anomalies that occur because of the redundancy now let's look at a few uh, solutions that we can use for such problems the first one is null values uh, okay null values cannot be used as a solution for the updation anomaly and the redundant storage but they can be used to address a few cases of insertion and deletion anomalies uh, see i am specifying only few cases because it cannot be used for all the cases it can only be used at few cases for example uh, i can uh, see i have taken a uh, five case in this exam in the same example now i've taken the rating of another person to be five and i don't know the hourly wages of that person so when i don't know the value i can specify that to be null only because i have a already data that means uh, a pair between the five and seven so uh, with the second data when i already have one particular pair i can have the second one to be null because i know uh, I can fill that with the ten, uh, 7 as I have the previous data. In only those cases this can be helpful but in other cases when there are no associated pairs this null values cannot help us. right? So let's look at the second solution possible that is decomposition. Like I said decomposition of a relation schema R consists of replacing the relation schema by two or more relation schemas that each contains a subset of attributes of R and together include all the attributes of R. This is as simple as that. There is an instance R, so decomposition of that particular instance R into two or more instances having uh, which are a proper subset of R. That means they are the small pieces of those uh, the main table R. When they are combined, it includes all the attributes, but when they are divided, they include proper subset of attributes. This is nothing but, you know, we have one particular instance of some columns. We are just defining or dividing them into two sets with few attributes. For example, we have seven attributes here. We can have five and we can have three here. I mean, yeah, we can repeat the values also. So, yeah, but when you combine these two tables, you should get this table. So this is what decomposition is. So yeah, let's and decomposition is used as a solution for the data redundancy. We have seen in the previous table the data redundancy between the rating value and the hourly wages. So now the hourly employees table can be divided into two such small tables in order to uh, reduce the redundancy problem. Right. So here the hourly wages with SSN name, lot rating, hourly wages, hourly worked is divided into uh, S name, I mean SSN name, lot rating works, wages where the repeating, two repeating things are placed separately. Let's look at the table. See, this table, I have divided that table into two, per, two instances. See, instead of repeating these values, I have just taken 8 to, if there is rating 8, then his age should be 10. If it is 5, it should be 7. All the other details will be here. The same information. See the redundancy is reduced in this table. So this is how decomposition can be used as a solution to reduce the redundancy. Okay. But sometimes redundancy can cause problems more than it can solve problems. Let's look at those instances also. So like I said, uh, decomposition sometimes create more problems than it can solve problems. So whenever you try, you wish to, uh, you know, decompose a particular rel a relation into smaller relations, you should ask two questions repeatedly. The first question is that, do we need to decompose a relation? The second question is, what problems does a given decomposition cause? So first question, do we need to decompose a relation? The answer to this is, we have something called uh, normal forms that actually help us in deciding if we should decompose a table into smaller instances or if we we should not or we don't have to so if the schema is comes under any one of the normal form we can say that a uh, certain kind of problems cannot raise 
if we use that particular normal form we have uh, five such normal forms and we mostly use uh, four such normal forms so if our relation instance falls under any one of the normal form we can say that that particular kind of problems cannot arise right so uh, normal forms also helps us to decide whether to decompose a relation or not to decompose a relation so this is a solution to the first question the second question is that what problems does a given uh, decomposition cause right so if at all we decompose the relations and what kind of problems might uh, we might occur right the second question answer is that we have two properties of decomposition so depending on these two properties we can uh, say what problems might occur the first property is that lossless joint property as the name suggests lossless so lossless property enables us to recover any instance of decomposed relation from the corresponding instance of smaller instance that means when we are decomposing a large instance a relation into two instances we should be we should also be able to get the uh, original instance by combining the smaller instances without loss of data right it is a vice versa of the decomposition process even when we perform the vice versa of i mean reverse of decomposition the data should not be lost which is called lossless joint property so the second one is dependency preserving property dependency preserving this means it enables us to enforce any integrity constraint on the original instance by simply enforcing on each of the smaller relations so we need not join them to check for the violation of the conditions that we applied on the original table this says that see uh if at all we want to enforce some integrity constraints on the original large instance r okay let me suppose this i have an instance r i have divided it into r1 and r2 right according to uh, lossless joint property when i you know when i join these two i should get r this is first property second property is that uh see now i'll enforce some integrity constraint one on relation one and one more instance one more constraint on relation two so in order to check this relation i don't have to join these two instead i can uh, check the constraints individually also and they they will hold on the original table also right so when i'm defining some constraint c1 and c2 in our smaller instance tables i am uh, indirectly enforcing them in the original table also so if i want to check uh, for the violation of the condition i don't have to join them i can simply check individual tables or i can check the original table only right so guys this is all about schema refinement uh, redundancy decomposition and the problems that we face because of the decomposition so i'll meet you in the next lecture where we will be discussing functional dependencies the second topic in a fourth chapter till then stay tuned thank you